Two thousand have died, they say. That's so sad, I mumble. I pull a face, then I thank God it isn't me, and I leave it. Can't do anything after all, so the channel is turned. I watch some people, famous for something I don't remember, talking to a chat show host. And I sit and stare, occasionally laughing so everyone knows I'm listening. My mind is momentarily liquidised, and I forget about it soon enough. When I was hungry, I went to buy some eggs, cursing when I stub my toe on the bed, grumbling as I step out into the rain. There is a paper sign outside the shop, wrinkled, talking of another disease spreading from Africa, with a large picture of another white casualty, and discussion of the hysteria. Whilst in small black letters, anonymous blacks have died. I did not feel my stomach churn. I couldn't do anything about it, after all. I buy my eggs, avoiding eye contact with the shopkeeper, and I forget about it soon enough. I walked through my city one day, passing Nelson on his large column, and tea towels that say proud Brit. I run down the steps into the bowels of Charing Cross, and passed a man gripping onto his sleeping bag. He asked me for change. I have some, but I lie and say I have none. I'm sorry. He lowers his head, breathing onto his hands. It's okay, he says, smiling. Then I run off. He'd have used the money for drugs anyway, and a few quid won't save him. So I grabbed myself a £2.50 coffee, and I forgot about it soon enough. My mother rings the next day. She sounds so much older to me now. And she wonders how her adult son is coping. And I tell her about the broken dishwasher. And she sends me some money to fix it. The couple down our road are being deported, she says. Visa expired, she says. Back to their own country, she says. Where the war is, I ask. Yes, she sighs. He couldn't even hold down a job. He should have learnt English, she notes. Well, what can you do? I feel a little anxiety for them, but only a subtle twinge. Then my mother starts talking about my brother, and we make plans for the weekend, and I forget about it soon enough. It was June the 28th. I wake up and see five missed calls from my mother. I ring her, ask her what is wrong. I hear the panic in her voice. It was all over the news. A bombing, they said. Terrorists, they said. My brother was on a school trip. When they found him, it was too late. Shrapnel bombs, they said. 76 gone, they said. He was gone, they said. Somebody screamed. A suicide oh, antidepressants administrated by the doctors the next road over. A funeral 70 years too early. We a father who couldn't handle the weight. stress. 75 other families reeling. And I know. At this moment, a young man in the East will go on to the news article. Wince. How terrible, he says. His friend pulls a face. Don't look at that, he says. It'll make you miserable, he says. And the two of them shrug, grab their bags, head out for the day, and they'll forget about it soon enough. <laughs>